Hi guys, welcome back to another video. If you are new, welcome. If you are not, welcome back. Before we start, I hope that you could hit the like, subscribe, and comment on any analysts that you would like me to work on. And I thank you for your support. So in this video, I will be covering on Capital Infrastructure Full Year 2022 Results, which is a business trust that is slightly different from REITs itself. I'll also be highlighting the green and the good things about capital infrastructure recent changes and the dividend prospects you in the upcoming future. So for business trusts, they are another category that is different from REIT but also not very different as they tend to hold any stable assets such as ports, infrastructures and telecommunications. However, it's important to ensure that they have a good fundamental and sponsors similar to REIT so that in the event if they are in trouble, there will always be a backup to support them. Moreover, since they do not have a gearing ratio of 50% that was set for REITs, it's important to ensure that the business trust is prudent in their spending even though there's no gearing limits. So Capital Infrastructure Trust has historically give dividend yields between 6.5% to 7.9% and with the recent change in the management, I am more optimistic with Capital Infrastructure Trust. If you believe in the approach of the management which is to increase the exposure to renewable assets, then KIT might be one for you to consider. As I have been an investor on and off for KIT, I follow them very closely throughout the years and have been my first shares of lots to purchase back when it was 2013. So in my opinion, a lot has changed for the better ever since Jopi Chiang from Kepler Capital took over the helm in around August of 2021. So previously, KIT was actually known to be a business trust that would only give fixed dividends throughout many years. But I was disappointed as there was no growth or determination and there was very little asset acquisition even though their gearing ratios are at a very decent low levels. However, since his takeover, he has already made some aggressive changes to the company itself and has been aggressively acquisishing assets that would be accretive to the distribution to shareholders. So as you can see from this slide, he has since his takeover, he has lived up to what his goal is, which is to grow KIT into a 18 billion asset management over the next decade, as he and his team have aggressively acquired different assets. Of course, there's definitely risk, but so far the assets seems to be doing well. As you can see, since the Exxon acquisition, there was only another acquisition that was the storage oil storage area in Philippines. Other than that, there was no longer any more acquisition after that. However, once he took over, he has started aggressively investing in Aramco Pipeline, Solar Farms, Keppel Marina Desalination Plant, Springleaf Desalination Plant Stake that he says purchased, Overseas European Wind Farm Energy Waste Management in Korea, and Wind Farm in Germany as well. Keppel Marina is desalination plant is not finalized yet but should be finalized soon once PUB approves and this one asset that you will want to focus on because it's a very very valuable asset. So this Kepler, this asset is an example of how important sponsor is. So the agreement if you do not know that the agreement is that Kepler KIT and Kepler Corp would split the stake 50% each. However, the economic or the benefits of the profit from this plant would be 100% taken by KIT. So imagine the benefit there will be. You are only paying 50% of the asset, but you are benefiting 100% from this asset. So this is the power of having a sponsor behind your back. So another valuable asset that I would like to highlight on is Exxon. So if you don't know what is Exxon doing, so Exxon is a big asset that is in Australia and New Zealand that supplies water treatment chemicals, industrial and specialty chemicals to different customers. So this asset is a very money generating asset that was previously almost sold by Kepler Infrastructure Trust Management, although I do not, I'm not really supportive of it. 
However, the sales didn't went through because there was no reasonable bid that came in. So, there is good and bad. So the bad thing is that, of course, they cannot reduce their debt to make further acquisition as aggressively as they want. But the good thing is that, since this asset is a very valuable asset, it, is a, it will be a constant money generating asset for the board members. So, for the management, going either ways is both good and bad as well. So, after all the acquisitions, let's take a quick look at their portfolio valuations. So, they have different assets, type of assets from energy transition to storage to environmental services and lastly, other small amount. Moreover, the assets are in different countries with Australia still being the majority even though last time it was much higher percentage. So, this is a good thing because at least Kepa KIT will not be dependent on Aussie dollar much for the income and would not be affected that much as they are more diversified into different countries. However, one thing to definitely take note is that even though the management can be aggressive in doing acquisition, it's important to ensure that all these new assets that they are taking in will give positive returns. To me, so far these assets that they are acquisitioning are quite decent so I'll give it a thumbs up. Okay, so looking at their distributable incomes, they have actually separated into many different comp categories for their different assets on their income. As you can see, the new assets such as the Aranco Pipeline and KMC, European Wind 4 and the Germany Wind Farm has already started contributing with a good values that will continue to ramp up throughout the years. Moreover, the EMK and the EMK can be seen here with a negative value. However, we will look at it at a different slides to see what is the reason why they have a negative distributable income. Okay, so looking at the EMK values, they are starting to contribute from with a decent revenue of 19 billion won itself. However, the total losses came in at 6.6 .6 billion and the net loss of 2 billion won. Moreover, the operation funds was a negative 1.8 billion, which is the value that you should focus on for business trust, as they are the ones that will give the distributable income based on this fund's value. However, there was a one-time acquisition cost that might have caused it to slightly drop. So, in the next few quarters, we will have to take note on whether this asset is a very reliable in providing cash flow to the Kepler Infrastructure Trust. So this is one of the reasons or one of the risks why if the assets do not perform upon acquisition, it might break down the distributable income to shareholders. So for their distribution and storage category, they have two different assets which is Ixon and the Philippine Coaster. So as you can see from this slide, the Philippine, the Ixon assets have constantly performed well as you can see that there was a 36.4 percent increase year over year in terms of revenue where the profit before taxes also came in at 100 percent higher and the net profit after taxes also came in at 100 percent higher giving a 17.6 percent increase in the funds that will be able to distribute to shareholders so that's the reason why I would say that Ixon is always one of the reliable assets to rely on in the event if all these new assets that comes in takes time to start performing. Okay, so whereas for the Philippine coastal wise, yes, the good thing is that the utilization rate has ran up by 90 to 90.5% up from 81% of the last quarter. So the additional costs came in due to tank conversion to increase the demand for economic grade gasoline. So this conversion has actually slightly deproved the profit of when you're comparing year over year. So this is a thing that to take note of, this might actually ensure that the asset will perform well throughout the next few quarters with these new tanks. Okay, so let's take a look into their debt profiles. As I said before, for Kepler Infrastructure Trust, they are a business trust. So gearing ratio, there's no limit for set for all this as compared to REITs. So for business trust, that's the main advantage. So if we see the gearing ratio, it's at a value of 39.8%. So imagine if it's a REIT, it's considered quite high because 
there's a risk of hitting the 50% gear rate limit. But for business trust, it's not a big concern. However, it's important for the management to ensure that it's not at a ridiculously high level to the extent that they have to default. And you see, the foreigners distributions are being hedged by 70.5% of the distribution. So this is very important because all the assets of capital infrastructure trust are diversified into different countries. So foreign exchanges will be an impact in the long term. Moreover, they also have loans are hedged at 72%. And the important thing to take note is that because currently capital infrastructure trust is constantly purchasing more and more new assets, it's important for all these assets to be benefiting capital infrastructure trust and also the shareholders as well. And they actually put a group slide here that the earnings before the income tax depreciation and appreciation has increased from 318 million to 465 million. So this is some good things that the management have done so far. So let's take a look into their debt maturity profile. As you can see that they have recently used the equity bridge loan of 580 million in 2022 to fund for their the Korean Waste Management Plant and the Wind Farm in Germany. So because of this, they have actually hinted or they have said openly that they will tap on the debts and the equity markets for repayment within the year. What should we expect is that they would issue more share rights. So if you are the shareholders and you are keen on buying, you could actually wait for this because normally the issued shares are at a discount. So for me, at a share price of about 55 cents, I would feel that they might be offering at about 53 or 52 cents. And I feel that this amount is very reasonable to buy in the long term because at these prices, its dividend will be about 7.2% dividend yield, which is very reasonable for the current yield. And you have to also account for the future acquisition or accretive dividend yields that might be coming if you are confident with the management's actions. Although there is no gearing limit, it, its distribution acts like a REIT. So like all REITs, they are also subjected to interest rate hikes. So because of this, they have actually said that a 1% increase in interest rate would have a 4% impact to the distribution. So hopefully, in the long term or the in the upcoming future, interest rate would stop rising and this would help to benefit Kepa Infrastructure Trust. So all in all, Kepa Infrastructure Trust is a very long trust that has been around for a very long time. However, due to recent changes, it's still undergoing changes for the better. However, one of the negative things that people always say is that their distribution income is always lower than the amount they distribute to shareholders, which means that they are giving out cash more than they are earning. However, since the recent acquisition, the distributable income is 134 million, while the distribution to shareholders declared was at 95.3 million, which is a much healthier value and a better for the long term and for upcoming potential acquisition by keeping more cash in hand. That's the reason why I've actually become more optimistic in the new management system rather than the old one where they are actually giving out more cash rather than how much they are earning. So in my opinion, I am optimistic with the management actions and the assets that they will be purchasing in the upcoming future and will definitely look forward to seeing their share issue rights. However, one of the main risks is definitely as I've said throughout the video is that when they are making so many new asset acquisition, it's important to ensure that they are performing well, even though there will be some that will not perform as well as they expect. Like one of the example was the bustling assets that was removed and is no longer around with us. So it's important for this management to make the correct acquisitions. Thank you so much for watching and I hope that this video actually brings about more information about Capital Infrastructure Trust because their assets are quite unique in various countries and different kind of assets perform differently. So if you have enjoyed the video, please like, subscribe and comment below if you are shareholders and how do you feel about the new management and the new potential acquisitions that are upcoming for Capital Infrastructure Trust.
Moreover, you can also watch my previous earnings analysis on other reads. Thank you so much again for watching and I'll see you in the next video.